Hi everybody and welcome to this video from the City of Ride for how to make art from waste materials. My name is Michelle and today we're going to talk about weaving. So there's a link below to the worksheet Let's Have a Yarn as well as the educational resource if you'd like some further information. So Let's Have a Yarn is all about weaving and weaving is something that crosses all cultures and all countries. It is an art form and a craft form. So it's something that can be made into something functional, like a basket, but it can also be made into beautiful artworks to hang on your wall as well. So let's get started. So weaving is always done on a loom and a loom can be out of anything you would like. So the first one is a commercial loom. This is something that's pre-made. It already has segments cut into it and you wrap your yarn around from the top to the bottom and then go across with the weft. So this is a frame that I found on the side of the road in council cleanup and I've decided to turn this into a weaving loom but instead of taking my weaving off the loom I'm going to keep it on it. So what I've done at the back, I've drilled some holes and I've put some o-rings at the top and now I'm starting to thread my yarn through this. And when I'm finished my weaving, it's going to look like this, in that it's going to stay in its frame and in its loom. The other option is to make your own, which is what I like to do. So what you'll need is a piece of cardboard, a ruler and some scissors and a pencil. So let's get started. Measure with your ruler every one centimetre and make a mark. Make sure that it's uniform, make little dots, and then we're going to lengthen them so that we know where to cut. So draw your lines all the way across in one centimetre segments. So the next stage is to start cutting them. So we want to turn it into tabs so that our yarn can go over and around them. So when you've cut all of your notches, it should end up looking like this. You need to be able to move your notches around so that the yarn will fit around and stay in place securely. So now that you've got your snips in your cardboard loom, let's dress it. So that means making the warp threads go from the top to the bottom. So the first thing is to secure your yarn. So put it onto the back and tape it down. You want to keep quite a nice long tail so that once you've finished your weaving, you'll be able to either sew this in or knot it onto one of the other loops. I'm going to use some industrial waste. This is just thin plastic twine. So there's lots of different options for what you can weave with. You can weave with yarn, with fabric, with plastic packaging, with ribbons, paper, cardboard, the list is endless. So now working from the bottom, we're going to put it through those notches that we just made. So bring it from the bottom to the top, around the tab, back down, through the bottom tab, up again, and keep going until it's gone the whole way across your loom. You want to have it quite tight, but you don't want to have the tabs buckling. So make sure that they're staying nice and flat, but that all of your yarn is quite firm. Once you get to the end, you'll hopefully have a lovely long tail again, and we're gonna stick that down again. So now that our warp threads are done, we're going to do the weft threads. So a good way to remember which thread you're doing, the warp always goes up and down, whereas the weft threads always go to the left and to the right. There are lots of ways of putting your weft yarn into your loom. You can use your fingers, you can also use a bodkin. And a bodkin is a special type of needle that has a really big eye and a blunt end. You can also make your own. So this is a little wooden skewer that I found in my kitchen and I've just taped my yarn onto the end of that. You might like to use a little wooden stick that you have, maybe from an ice cream treat, or you can make your own as well. So this one is just a piece of scrap cardboard and I've cut some points on the end to help me to get my yarn through. 
tape it onto the end and you're ready to go. And the basic weave is always over and under all the way across. So this one, I'll start and go over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under. And with my other hand, we're gonna to start to pull it through and you'll see the weaving take form. So over, under, over, under, over. When you're pulling it, do it gently and slowly because you don't want to break your loom and you don't want all of your beautiful weaving to come undone. So you might like to leave a tail again and stick it down. If you're new to weaving, it gets it out of the way. But once you get really good at it, you don't need to stick them down all the time. We're going to push our yarn up to the top of the loom. So you can either use your fingers like this, or maybe you have a fork at home. You can use a fork to bring it up, or maybe a comb. Now my yarn, my weft yarn, is sitting nice and snug at the top. So when it's sitting nice and straight, you're ready to go back the other way. And this is really important. So because the yarn is currently under, now I need to go over. So over that one, under that one, over that one, under that one, all the way to the end. So at this stage, you wanna check that that warp yarn is still staying nice and upright. If I pull too hard, it will start to distort my loom. And that's shown me that I need to release some of that pressure, make it nice and straight again, and use my comb or my fork on my fingers to bring that yarn up slowly. So once you get lots of practice in doing a plain weave, which is over and under, you can start doing different weaves and experimenting with different patterns. You can also start to introduce new colours. So this one is a twill weave and it goes over two, under two, over two, pull it through gently. And keep a nice long tail. I'd like to show you some different options for weaving now. You might like to use a thin piece of cardboard, so then you're going to have a really long, thin bit of weaving. This is one that has been made from fabric. These are fabric scraps from an interior designer and they've got a beautiful range of colours in those shades. And I've used some pinking shears, which will give that beautiful zigzag cut onto my fabric. So this is an old Christmas ribbon that I've reused for my warp yarn. Another idea is to use paper. So I found an old magazine and this was an image that I thought was really beautiful. So I focused on the bottom of the floor where there was a rug and I ripped it using a ruler. So just carefully push your ruler down with one hand and your other hand just gently pulls that paper up towards you. So you might need quite a few of those strips and then it's the same process. And with this one, I've used some baker's twine so the other one is to weave with different materials. So with this one, my warp yarn is blending in to my weft yarn. You can't see it so much. We're really celebrating those wonderful, diverse textured ribbons. So at the bottom, I've got a bit of a pattern with some thin metallic ribbon, some lovely textural thick wide ribbon, and then some shiny ribbon you can definitely vary it up and make it look really individual and beautiful. In here is just a collection of different things you could use. Some braids, some old gift wrapping ribbons, some lovely diverse collections that I've found from secondhand shops and charity shops. The other thing that I'd like to show you is how to weave in a circle. So these are some looms that I'm going to make out of paper plates. 
and I've checked and measured and if I cut every three grooves, it gave me equal tabs around my plate. So we're going to make the warp yarns, but instead of going up and down, these ones are gonna go opposite. So we'll start exactly the same way. Have a tail at the back, stick it down, turn it to the front and go through, down and across, around, through, and opposite, around, and all the way to the end. So you're crossing over every time you do it. I'm going to pull my last bit through and onto the back, take my tail down. So now it's just a matter of weaving around in a circle this time. I'm going to use this knobbly yarn, which is quite fun to weave with. So I'm going to use my fingers to do this one. Same process, under, over, under, over. You'll end up with an end and you can tuck it in, push it into the center and then from the other end, start to close up your circle. So once you've made a circle, you can either stop there and tuck a tail in underneath and now you're ready to either change colour or keep going. So now I'd like to show you how to finish off your weaving if you'd like to take it off your loom. So if you have woven on something like a cardboard loom, it's not probably going to be what you would like to hang on your wall. So there are a few different options. So you can Bend the tab and carefully take your loops off. So work the whole way around. And there are a few different options now. You could put something through it. So this is an old knitting needle. You might like to just weave them through a knitting needle and you can hang it off like that. You can also tie knots into them at the end very carefully so that your weaving doesn't come off. So now you know how to weave in a straight line. You also know how to weave in a circle. So now it's up to you as to what you'd like to do with your weaving skills. You can incorporate different ways of patterns and colors you can make it as individual as you would like. So I look forward to seeing some of the weaving that you do. Please send us some photos and remember to submit your entry to the Swap Art Prize.